Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Testy Tuesday. Yeah, I'm sitting inside today, even though it's beautiful outside. But right now, there's a bunch of tree trimmers out front, and they're making a lot of racket, especially with the as they're grinding up all the branches they're cutting down. You know, the ones that go along the electrical lines to to keep things in good shape for us. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. So, Testy Tuesday. You tell me which Old Testament prophet this is. Um, you know what? I'm not going to give you any choices. You just name this Old Testament prophet. We've talked about him before. He came from the south, from Judah, was called by God to go north to Israel, the ten tribes of Israel up north. Remember, this is the, the divided kingdom now, around 750 or so B.C., and, um, well, he didn't get a very good reception when he was up there. And basically, it's because he told the people, they're all going to die. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, who wants to hear that stuff, right? You know, go home. Who was told to go home? Hmm. You know who it is. It's Amos. Amos, yeah. God called Amos to go up north and preach this very harsh word of judgment to them. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but... I'll give you a shot at, at Testy Tuesday again, right now. What was Amos's occupation when he was down south, back home? Was he a tax collector? Was he a carpenter? Or did he take care of sheep and pick figs? The answer is the last one. He, he tended to his sheep and tended to his fig trees. Yeah. So, all right, so God calls him and says, go up north. He didn't want to go, but he went, and he gets this awful, awful reception because he's saying stuff like this, seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, the house of Joseph being the northern tribes, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it, Bethel being the place of worship, the main city of worship at that time up north. Ah, oh, you who turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. Yeah, he, he doesn't mince his words. He just comes right out and, and says it. And, and this is what he goes on to say. Because you trample on the poor and take from them le uh, levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you will not live in them. You've planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink its wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy at the gate, therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. <sighs> okay, get the point? Well, Amos came right out and spoke a word of truth, and they did not want to hear it. They did not want to hear it which only makes us think, okay, Amos said these things to the people and the truth be told, they didn't listen to him. What happens a little bit later, not long after this, within, well, just after Amos's lifetime, anyhow, the Assyrian army comes down and absolutely decimates the Northern Kingdom. Takes some people off into captivity, slaughters the, a lot of the other ones, decimates the land. It's seen as judgment. Judgment because the people have basically turned their backs on on Yahweh. No, you know what? These people are still worshiping Yahweh. Yeah, see, Amos is not speaking against their cultic practices, their worship practices. No, he, he's not speaking against that he's speaking against their social actions at the gate at the gate is where all the legal uh, disputes were settled and there's no justice there at the gates they're turning aside the poor the rich are getting richer the poor are getting poorer and what a mess we have in other words they know the truth they know what God expects of them but they turn their back on that truth so in effect, they've turned their back on God. They've turned their back on Yahweh. So 
as opposed to some of the other prophets who are going to talk about the worship of false gods and building altars to these other gods and things like that as being part of the problem. That's not mentioned here in Amos. The real problem is how do you treat those around you? How do you treat your neighbors? How do you treat the foreigners? How do you treat those who really need your help? A message that not only was meaningful millennium ago, meaningful for us today. Okay, well, God's blessings be with you. And I don't know if you can hear all the wood chipping going on in the background. It's pretty noisy in my ears, maybe not in yours, but it's going on. And yeah, maybe there's biblical prophecies that talk about cutting down the tree by the... Uh oh, yeah, I think... I think Jesus said something like that too in one of the Gospels. <clears throat> okay, God's blessings be with you and be those who establish justice in the gate. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. The word of God that Amos shared with the people in the north. God's blessings be with you. <laughs>